Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm going to be talking about my story as a self-taught developer. And it's probably slightly different just because every time I tell this story, I think that there's new details that emerge. And um, I'm a self-taught developer. I've been doing this professionally now for 10 years. And at the 10-year mark, things feel a lot different than when I first started. But when I go back 10 years to when I first started, my motivation was simply because I was fed up with my job. Like I, 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 uh, at, at the time, I literally hated my job. I went to a rock music concert. I called out of work a couple times afterwards because I just didn't feel well. Uh, but it was more not just really a cold, although I did have a cold. I, I was more just kind of, I think, depressed. I was just depressed with the fact that I was making about 45000 a year or something like that. Actually, I was making slightly more than that, but I was basically capped out at, at what I could do in that particular career. I was actually uh, uh, investigating auto accidents at the time. And um, although I really liked that job for a long time, like uh, seven years in, I was, I was done. And uh, when I decided to be a programmer, I remember I was talking to my father about all these different business ideas that I had. I wanted to make a rock music website. And basically when I found out from him that programming all it really required was just simply an internet connection and a desire to learn and then you also need to have uh perseverance like perseverance probably the biggest thing because when i was first starting like my god i struggled with everything like i struggled with Perl. i switched to python i struggled with that when i started doing html and css i struggled with that uh, when I first started building my, my programs, they were the simplest programs like console apps with Python and like it would ask you like a question, you put something in, I'm doing you know basic if else conditions and uh, my programs were terrible. So like at the time I'm like how the hell am I supposed to build things like websites or servers and all this other stuff. And then when I look at that now, it's like well you don't really have to do any of that stuff. It wasn't really until talking to my father uh, who was a software developer who basically kind of showed me that you don't have to reinvent the wheel and it wasn't too long after really that I just started realizing that to be a programmer you had to start branching into all these different uh, like so if you're going to do web development obviously that consists of JavaScript HTML CSS you have to deal with different image types you have to deal with things like Photoshop uh, none of this stuff you, you you don't know any of it coming out of the gate uh, and the only thing that's going to make sense is just simply time. Like time will make sense of all this stuff for you. But the question is how much time? And a lot of times people think that they can fast track their way into being like a software engineer. I love when people give advice on, uh, on YouTube and I did the same thing, you know, I, when I was just a few years into it, just giving, you know, different, uh, you know, advice on how I did this and how I did that. And, and ultimately though, it just comes down to ambition and perseverance because you're gonna struggle with any new technology that you're dealing with. Uh, anytime you try to go, uh, like for instance, if I'm a web developer and I wanna start doing data visualization, data plotting and mapping, I mean, if you've ever looked at the D3 library, um, they really dumb things down as much as possible for what it does, but it doesn't actually hold your hand in any sort of way. So for a web developer who's now trying to do data visualiz visualization, uh, or say I get into mobile development, um, those things are completely different. I have to completely start from square one. Now you don't have to learn your basic if else conditions. You don't have to learn basic logic and how to abstract things. Um, but you do have to struggle and you're always gonna struggle. So my story as a self-taught dev is simply that I had a project, a vision in mind, and I just got to, to working on it. I had nightmares about coding. Uh, I literally would wake up in the middle of the night like, oh fuck, I can't solve that problem. Uh, or sometimes I would wake up in the morning and be like, oh, I tried to go about it this way, this way, this way. Why didn't I do it this way? Oh, this is so obvious in hindsight. You know, it's like these things, like they just slowly come together. And I think depending on how much of an aptitude you have uh, determines how fast all this stuff is gonna come together for you. But there is no right answer. There's no single book that you can go to to learn something. It's really just practice and repetition and like I said, perseverance to not give up, especially when you're getting frustrated and it feels like you're never gonna get to where you wanna be. So basically for me, when I first started becoming a programmer, this was uh, 2009 or so, 
I had a slight interest in it before that, but like I never dabbled in anything. So in 2009, like I, I didn't get my first time, uh, first full time job until 2012. And yeah, it was about early 20, yeah, it was early 2012 that I got my first job. So yeah, roughly 12 years or 10 years, I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, like there was nobody to help me or to tell me, hey, you got to learn this or this or this. Like I just simply, was trying to build something a full scale rock music website and you quickly understand where where you need to focus but guys a long story short I, I struggled my ass off for three years raising a family going to work every day paying my mortgage coming home and spending my evening evenings and weekends learning how to code and I spent literally thousands of hours probably over a three year period of time um, nothing captured my attention more than programming so once I started building things and I started seeing things come together the motivation just kept kicking in to continue to try uh, to not doubt myself when I couldn't figure something out and just and, and even now like I know that I'll just eventually figure it out so where I'm stumped some days um, like these days much easier for me just to take a break and be like hey I'm spinning my wheels here that you know I need to go ahead and just take a break do something else uh, where when I was first getting started I just couldn't remove myself and like I feel like I didn't actually utilize my time as well as I could have so for three years I was uh, I actually started a business and a few tips like if you guys ever want to start your own business and in, in the United States um, I, I was in Virginia so I mean every state is a little bit different but like there's a process that you have to follow in order to start an actual company and that was really my ticket into this programming field I did create that rock music website and eventually I was able to show that and everything I had done to collect the data using Perl and Python and all kinds of stuff, the databases behind it. Uh, I was able to talk about it and I was able to talk about it with passion and enthusiasm. Uh, it was all completely self-taught and that is what companies are looking for. In my case, when I realized that I probably wasn't ever going to get the opportunity just by simply learning a bunch of coding and then taking tests and stuff to get a job. Um, that, I guess I should say that that wasn't really my intention. I never thought that I was going to be a senior software engineer. I actually thought I was just going to be an entrepreneur uh, and make millions of dollars just coming up with my own coding platform uh, or coding my own platform. But in a nutshell, to start your own business, um, in order to make sure you're protected legally from you know personal liabilities and everything else that could come, come about from uh, maintaining your own content on the, the interwebs, the uh you you need to have a business um so like you, you, for virginia you register your business um well first thing you do actually is you need to have a uh, a bank account you need to register well let me let me back that up sorry i didn't really plan this but the the first thing you have to do is you have to have a federal tax id number that you can just get from the irs um you need to have some sort of doing business as or you need to have an actual company um, that you are registering with whatever state you're going to be operating out of. So for Virginia, there's an SEC um, website that you just simply have to pay a $50 registration fee or something like that, and you register the name of your business. You're able to take that name of the business and you're able to start a bank account once you have a federal tax ID number. And then once you do that, you can go ahead and start purchasing your domains and all that other stuff in the business's name. You also probably want to organize an actual business. In my case, I started an LLC. Uh, and that's what I started with, uh, you know, through the state of Virginia. So fast forward, I'm doing all that stuff for three years. I'm calling myself a programmer, even though my full-time job is something completely different. I basically say, yeah, I'm a you know business owner. And, uh, and I, I just remember talking to all kinds of different people, including Anthony Ranieri, the lead singer of Bayside, one of my favorite bands, uh, or the, my favorite band, actually. And uh, I just remember telling him about the you know the website and, and what my plans were and all that stuff he was just he was really supportive but i was just a fan or whatever so i mean i don't expect him to be uh all that serious or interested in what i was doing but those types of little things just motivated me to continue really for me it, it almost got to the point where i just simply couldn't fail i couldn't give up i had already invested so much time and effort into it i wasn't going to back down i wasn't going to stop and I, I was embarrassed along the way several times. Uh, one time through that Android programming job I applied to for a senior Android position, uh, knowing you know just a basic jo uh, Java basically at the time. And 
those embarrassments almost caused me to quit, but I never did. So if there's any purpose behind this video is to simply don't doubt yourself, don't give up, and just know that these things come together with time and there's nothing short of that. And I'll also say that like one of my concerns when I was first getting hired was that I thought I was gonna be working with these guys that like wore like lab coats and knew a ton of math and were just gonna make me embarrassed all the time. Uh, and then once I got into the field, I just, I simply realized that it just wasn't the case. And then when I thought that maybe it was just like this at, at one particular company I went to, when I went to another company, I found it was the same thing there. So even though you do have slightly varying degrees of people's talent at different companies, nobody's perfect, nobody's as good as you think that they are. And the really good ones are the ones that, that act like they don't know a whole lot, really, um, because they know they don't. So basically, guys, go out there, get it done, do whatever you have to do in order to get your project off the ground, show it to other people, show your enthusiasm and excitement, be humble, don't be an asshole, and you're going to get your shot. I mean, you, you just will. And I don't regret it after 10 years, so hopefully you guys do. Or you know, hopefully you don't regret it, but hopefully you guys do what I did. <laughs> All right, guys, good luck and have a good day. Take care. Bye.